Hello, Bob the Giraffe Monkey here, uh, and I'm just going to discuss some of the CSP parity detection method that Kale recently proposed. Uh, there's a discussion in the Facebook group, and I think he posted it on the Speed Solving Forum as well. So, uh, I, I'm going to assume you've already read the description of that. I will have a link in the description to... Uh, where the details of that can be found. It made a video for it as well uh, with the details. So you have the say the eight edge pieces. Uh, these are actually three with three edge pieces because they're easier to uh, disassemble. Uh, so you have some sort of order for the say the, the yellow ones and the white ones and you want to detect the parity of the four yellow ones within themselves, the four white ones within themselves and then you count how many yellow ones are in even numbered positions or something like that so uh, like whether that whether the number of yellow edge pieces in even positions is even or odd is the same as the yellow positions in the, the yellow pieces in the odd positions the white pieces in the even positions and the white pieces in the odd positions they'll all either be even or they'll all be odd uh, so you can just do whichever one. Um, but I'm going to just kind of step away from my uh, colour scheme here and use uh, playing cards instead. These are actually uh, Rubik's playing cards. Um, I got these for Christmas as a random present at some point uh, a year or two ago. So same sort of thing. So we have uh, these are equivalent to the eight pieces, so instead of white and yellow we have black and red and instead of four different colours we have ace, two, three, four, which is sort of like one, two, three, four, obviously. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate with these instead, uh, just in case you have a different colour scheme and I don't want to confuse people. So, um, I think this is the sort of arrangement Kale had in mind, so you have uh, one to four of one of the colours and then one to four of uh, the other colour uh, like this uh, as the sort of reference scheme you had in mind. You don't explicitly think of a reference scheme but there has to be one. That's how CSP works. Um, the nice thing about his method is you don't really think about the, that as much. Uh, I probably won't be switching to it personally because I put a lot of practice into just the blind tracing method uh, I'm quite comfortable with that, um, so I won't be switching, but for people starting out they might think this is better and I think it's quite a cool idea, it's very clever, so that's why I'm making the video. So some people were kind of wondering how this works and I'm going to try and uh, show why. Um, first of all I'm going to change the reference scheme here because this is not how I thought of it. Uh, but they are equivalent. So there, uh, for the eight pieces, there's eight factorial reference schemes possible, uh, which is just eight times seven times six times and so on down to one. Uh, I can't remember the exact number that is off the top of my head. So it's quite large. Uh, I think tens of thousands. Uh, there's two sets, and if two reference schemes are in the same set, then they'll give you the same answer. And you can tell that if you can get from one reference scheme to the other by making an even number of swaps, then they'll tell you the same answer and they're equivalent. So I'm going to change this into how I think about it. And they'll do, use an even number of swaps so you know that they'll have the same effect on parity. Uh, I'm going to explain how it works in terms of my reference scheme. And uh, if you want, you can check you understand it properly by doing it exactly for this layout here. Um, so, I'm going to do this, so, uh, one swap, these are quite difficult to pick up actually, two swaps, three swaps, and four swaps, okay? So you can see what I've done here. We're alternating black and red, and we're just going one, two, three, four as uh, before. And I think this makes more sense. So uh, you determine the parity of the 
black ones relative to each other and they are increasing. One, two, three, four. Exactly the same for the red ones. One, two, three, four. Um, I'd like to have had these all in one long line, but I couldn't fit that onto the screen. Um, so we're going along this top line, then along this bottom line. Uh, it's not ideal, possibly, but it's the best I can do. Uh, and then for how many there are in the even or odd positions, well, it's either zero or four. So you look at the black cards in the uh, odd positions, for instance, then it's four, that's even. And this is why I think this makes more sense. For, uh, with the previous one, it was the roll two, which does work out kind of nicely as well, but I don't know. I think this is more natural. Okay, so we're going to talk through some small examples and then we are going to look at a full scramble and see how that works. So, as we're starting with the black cards in the correct order and the red cards in the correct order, and uh, we're always going to be just looking at the black card in the odd positions. Um, you can either look at black or red, odd or even, it doesn't really matter, they're all the same. Uh, it's fairly obvious to see why they're all the same. So, when we're doing this, we're going to get to this colour scheme first, and we're not going to change the order of the black cards relative, relative to themselves, and we're not going to change the order of the red cards relative to themselves. So... You look at what happens when you swap two uh, adjacent cards of different colours. So, say we do this here. Okay, so that's one swap, so that must be an odd parity overall. Uh, the permutation must be an odd parity. It doesn't come from the orderings of the black cards, because they're still one, two, three, four doesn't come from the orderings of the red cards, one, two, three, four, like, they haven't changed. But there are now three black cards in those positions uh, instead of four, so that has changed. And maybe you can start to see that whenever you swap two adjacent cards of different colours, you, you're not changing the orders of the black cards, you're not changing the order of the red card, but you will change the parity of how many black cards there are in odd positions and you're changing the parity of the permutation. They move in step with each other, they always have to be the same. That's how this is, oh they don't have to be the same, whenever one changes the other one has to change and that's how this goes. Let's see. So I'm just sort of messing up the first row. Now again we see the black cards are in order, the red cards are still in order. So yeah, so the, the black cards are still in order, the red cards are still in order. Um, so now we need to get back to the colour scheme. So, first of all, do we expect this to be even or odd? Black cards in odd positions, that has to be uh, odd. There's three of them. So then we do... Uh, we're all swapping two cards that are next to each other, which are different colours. So that's one swap. Two swaps, three swaps. Okay, odd permutation, that's what we expected. Uh, and you see every step I changed two adjacent cards of different colours and I changed the parity of uh, the number of black cards in the odd positions. You can go through that slowly if you want to check, but you know that that's the point of this. And so that's kind of why that works. So then, figuring out the total permutation parity of all eight uh, can then be broken down into the three different steps. You have the permutation of the black cards relative to each other, the permutation of the red cards relative to each other, and the parity of the number of black cards in odd positions. And if you combine the, those three parities, then uh, you get the correct answer for the total parity, which is quite cool. So uh, let's do a full scramble and uh, I'll just cut back once that's been done. So I've shuffled the cards, dealt them back out. So let's look at the colour scheme first. So black cards, odd positions, even. This is actually 
a relatively neat looking position. That's a complete accident. Um, you can practice this a bit more and convince yourselves it works in general. Uh, I've already explained why that works, but um, working through examples can uh, sort of help you understand. So that's even number of black cards in our positions, so it should take an even number of swaps to get uh, back to the normal colour scheme. That's one swap, two swaps done, so that's even, that's exactly what we expected. So then to get this fully solved, we arranged black cards within themselves and the red cards within themselves. Okay? So, um, maybe this would be better if we then go back to uh, this arrangement here. So, uh, hopefully I've done that correctly and not mixed anything up. Yeah. I already said that it takes an even number of swaps to get from this colour scheme with all black and all red to the one I was using a second ago. So that's not a problem. It just might make it easier to see the permutation of each type of piece. Uh, and so there's a few different ways that you can uh, do this. So the way Kale proposes is just to uh, memorise what parity you get from looking at the first three because, you know, if I cover up this fourth one, you can work out what it is and therefore you can determine the total parity. So you can then just determine the parity for the first three and you can just memorise each of those. Um, there's 12 for even parity, 12 for odd parity. Uh, I think he just memorised which 12 have even parity and can go from there, which is probably quite fast. Uh, that could work. Um, you could in theory do sort of line style tracing, so we'll start with the buffer here and uh, that would work. I don't expect anyone will do that, but you know, it's a viable option that can be done. Um, or because it's only four, you can maybe just directly look at the cycles. So here we have one correct, three wrong, so that's a three cycle, that's an even permutation. So there's different ways of doing that. So here I'll just do this as a three cycle. So that's also an even permutation. So parity so far for this has been even, uh, both for the colour scheme and for the black cards. And then uh, finally we see here that this is a four cycle. So like so. So that was an odd permutation and therefore the entire thing was odd. Okay, and that's how that works. So that's how you break down the permutation of um, all uh, eight pieces into the permutation of uh, one colour of them relative to themselves, permutation of the other colour just relative to themselves, and then the number of one certain colour in either all the odd positions or the even positions. Hopefully that helped people to understand this. After that you just need to uh, practice, I guess. Um, it does work for any square one shape. Uh, it's easiest for the star cases, of course. Um, I would always recommend starting learning CSP with the star cases anyway. Uh, so that's a good place to practice. And it works for all the rest of them, so um, yeah, you can you can then just use that as your CSP recognition system for all of CSP. Uh, I, I initially thought that it wouldn't work as well for uh, certain cases, uh, so the cases with three corners one layer and five on the other, I thought they'd be quite awkward, but I've tried this a little bit and it's actually okay. So... Um, yeah, that, that really shouldn't be a problem. So if you want to use this system, hopefully you understand it a little better now. Uh, and you can go ahead and learn. And if there's any other questions, uh, feel free to ask them in the comments and I can try to help. Okay, thanks for listening.